Hello, hello, my name is Wojciech Lepczyński and this tiny device right here, this is Raspberry Pi 02W. It's small, very powerful and compared to the latest Raspberry Pi 5, it's also very cheap. It may not seem impressive, but you can transfer this tiny device into something truly incredible. Into Bjorn. Bjorn is a powerful network scanning and offensive security tool designed specifically for the Raspberry Pi with an e-paper display. It's like having a mini cyber toolkit in your pocket. With this, you can find devices on your local network, identify open ports and vulnerable services, perform brutal force attack and even steal files. You can even zombify hosts. This device supports custom attack scripts, so as they say, the sky is the limit. It also has a cool display with small Viking. This is something like a Tamaguchi for people from IT security. Bjorn is perfect for anyone who wants to dive into IT security or needs a compact but powerful network analysis device. So this is a great tool, but you have to remember that you can only connect this device to your network or a network where you have received permission from the owner because it's strictly prohibited to connect this type of device to a network that is not yours or where you don't have permission from the owner. So, if you know this, I will show you how to build this great security tool from scratch, including printing a custom case, installation and putting everything together. I will also talk about the difficulties, errors and so on. I show you how I deal with them. For example, how I connect my color e-paper display and how you can connect to this device via Wi-Fi or USB. So let's dive in. Let's start with the hardware. I found a 3D printed case on the internet designed specifically for this project. It's made for the Raspberry Pi Zero with the e-paper hat and even has a cool Bjorn logo on the back. The project is small, functional, prints without problems and I really like it. I also ordered something for myself and this is what my new Bjorn case looks like. Let's move on to setting up the software. Start by installing the appropriate Raspberry Pi OS using the Raspberry Pi imager. You can download the imager from the official Raspberry Pi website. Once installed, open the imager, select your device and the operating system. Based on the documentation you can install 32-bit operation system on Raspberry Pi 0W and 64 on Raspberry Pi 02W. So I choose 64. After selecting the correct OS, choose your micro SD card as the target and hit next. Edit settings. Now you should set hostname and login Bjorn. For the password set wherever you want. You can also set SSID and password for your Wi-Fi network and the rest of the stuff. If you want more security, allow public key authentication only. But for me, password is okay for now. Save. Yes. Yes. And this takes some time, so you can go for a coffee. Oh, and one piece of advice. If you are planning to build this project, I highly recommend getting the Raspberry Pi version with pre-soldered GPO pin. I made the mistake of getting the version without them, which means I had to solder the pins myself. On the bright side, I got the dust off my old soldering iron and relieved the glory days of soldering tiny components into circuit boards. If you don't want to solder, it's better to buy the version with solder pins, the Raspberry Pi 02WH, and not the Raspberry Pi 02W. The H on the end. Once the system and case is ready, it's time to put everything together. For this project, you will need a Raspberry Pi, compatible e-paper hat, and some basic tools. I'm using a 2 13 inch wave shared color e paper display, which works beautifully once it's set up properly, but more on that later. Okay, let's speed it up. Insert a micro SD card into the Raspberry. Connect the power supply. Choose the lower one from the USB ports. The upper one is for connecting via USB. I will tell you about it later. For now, we'll connect via Wi Fi. Once the OS is installed and your Raspberry Pi is booted up, it's time to set up Bjorn. 
The installation is simplified with an automatic script. Copy. Now you need to find out what IP address your Raspberry has. You can check in several ways. For example, check your router, scan your network and so on. I got a notification on my phone that a new device connected to my Wi-Fi network, so it's easier for me. If you still don't know how to find your Raspberry Pi IP address, check it out GitHub. You can use Bjorn Detector and SSA Launcher. Now connect to the Wi-Fi. Remember that you have to be connected to the same Wi-Fi network that your Raspberry Pi is connected to. Open CLI, SSH Bjorn and your IP. If you see something like this, this means that you have already connected to this IP address and another device was there before. So, if you are connecting to your Raspberry for the first time, it's okay. Just edit known host file. You can do it for example like this. Notepad known hosts. Remove the entry for the IP used by Raspberry and save. Now when you connect again, everything will be ok and new entry will be added to the known host file. Now paste and run the following commands. During the installation you will be prompted to choose an option. Select option 1 for automatic installation. Select your ePaper display version. Note that this process may take a while, as a lot of packages and modules will be installed. Once it's complete, make sure to reboot your Raspberry Pi. For more detailed guide, check out Bjorn GitHub repository, the link is in the video description. The installation process is generally straightforward, but I did encounter a few issues along the way. The easiest way to resolve them was by restarting the installation process from the scratch or using a new SD card with a clean system. If you face issue, try a fresh SD card with clean installation of Raspberry Pi OS. Ok, Bjorn is ready. Now restart. Here is why things go tricky. My ePaper display won't showing anything initially, even though it was properly connected. If you are not sure if your display is working properly, you can go to Wavesharecom like I did and there you will find a step-by-step -step description of what to do to test your ePaper display. I will show you this process at the end of the video and how you connect via USB without using Wi-Fi. My Wavesharecom ePaper display was working fine. After several hours of troubleshooting and trying and trying different ways to make it work with Bjorn, I found a helpful forum post. It mentioned that someone struggling with a version 4 display resolved the issue by selecting version 3 in the configuration. I thought I'd give it a shot and to my surprise it worked. Even on my color e-paper display it came to life and showed the information perfectly. To clarify, Bjorn officially supports monochrome display from version 1 to 4, but I'm using a version 4 color display which only works correctly when configured as version 3. If you're using a Wavesharecom color display like I am, you will need to manually select display version 3 in the settings or at the beginning during installation. It's a bit strange, but it works. Let's go to the web interface, just IP and port 8000. Copy. Just IP and port 8000. Yes, he's alive. You can enable logs. Let's go to the config. and change from V4 to V3. Save. Ok, you can now restart your BR. I will just turn the power off and plug into my power bank. That way I can make it portable and take it anywhere. By the way, it works on my power bank for a few days. Let's wait a moment. Yeah, he's alive. 
once configured the display comes to life showing all the critical information Bjorn provides and honestly it looks fantastic now let's see Bjorn in action it can scan networks identify open ports and even highlight potential vulnerabilities you can also perform more advanced tasks like brute force attack or running custom scripts it's a powerful tool for network analysis and offensive security on the display you will see several icons wi-fi because it's connected via wi-fi but you can also see the bluetooth or usb symbol and the last one show up when ip is being shared via bluetooth or usb number of ips targets detected on the current networks number of open ports number of vulnerabilities total number of uh, cracked uh, credentials total number of zombified machines with uh, persistence still work in progress total number of stolen files from all attacks status image and text uh, is changed depending on the current action dialogue zone where bjorn talks to you about everything Comments depend on the actions and the current situation. This is your animated Viking. Different types of image depending on what he's doing. Easily customizable. Virtual money. Work in progress. Level archived depend on the experience. Total of all known hosts. Representing his knowledge base of all his scanner networks. And number of different types of attacks added to his arsenal. As I mentioned at the beginning, Bjorn's arsenal can be highly customizable by adding your custom attack scripts in Python. Want to capture pickup over the network, use TCP dump or even employ responder? It's up to you. Okay, let's go back to the web interface for a moment. As you know, this is config. Here you can zoom in and zoom out. This is for the Wi-Fi network. If you want to connect to another one, you can do it here. Be careful, because if you enter the password incorrectly, then you will have a problem to connecting to Bjorn. So, if you can't connect via Wi-Fi, it's best to connect via USB. And enter the password for the Wi-Fi correctly. At the end of the video, I will show you how to do it. Network. Here you will find the IP address, MAC address and open ports from detected devices. Here you have even more information, for example, that Bjorn successfully provides brutal force attack and steals something from my device. Here you can hide the mini and display it again. Here credentials. As you can see, he probably stole the password for the second Bjorn that I created. As you can see, given the same simple login and password, it's a weak protection. Here are some treasures. Here you see the same thing on the display. Here we have additional options like backup, reboot and so on and so on. Ok, let's move on to the troubleshooting. If you want to test your display, go to manufacturer's website, in my case Wavesharecom. Wiki. First, let's check if SPI is enabled. So, sudo raspi config. Interface options, SPI, yes, OK, finish. Now install Git. And clone repository from the GitHub. Copy. paste. This can take some time. Let's speed up the recording. Go to the folder Python examples. 
Here are files for testing different displays. But if you already installed Bjorn, you have to stop it first because it uses GPO pins. So, sudo services bjorn stop. And now you can run the test for your display. If the display is connected correctly, you should see something like this. Okay. If you want to connect to Bjorn via USB, connect the cable to the second socket. Remember that the bottom one is only for power. Now open network connection and you should see USB Ethernet gadget. If you don't see this, you probably still need to install drivers. Once you do this, go to the properties, open TCP IP protocol and edit. If you remember the screen when Bjorn installation was finished, the information needed for this was there. So, fill it in, save. Close and go to CLI. You can try ping Bjorn local. You can use this IP. As you can see, it's not IPv4, it's V6. But it works. So that's all. And there you have it, a fully functional Bjorn network device. From printing the custom case to overcoming hardware and software challenges. This project was a journey, but the end result is absolutely worth it. It's compact, powerful and great addition to any tech enthusiast toolkit. That said, it's important not that Bjorn is currently in the alpha stage and I'm eagerly looking forward to how this project evolves. With such a strong foundation, the possibilities for improvement and new futures are incredibly exciting. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more tech projects like this. Let me know in the comments if you are built Bjorn or plan to do. And feel free to share your own tips and setup. Thanks for watching and see you in the next episode.